All right, uh, this is the last week of classes. Uh, I will post an announcement that will review some of these things. Um, but um, Wednesday will be um, a work day. Uh, no, Wednesday will be whatever you want to do day. Actually, when it comes down to it, every day is a whatever you want to do day. I mean, you don't even have to be here today, right? I mean, you chose to be here today, and that's good. All right? But Thursday, in this class specifically, will be a work day, which means that we won't have a lecture. I'll be in lab, and I'll be answering any questions that you have about any of your assignments or your project. Um, look at the due dates on stuff. I don't have them memorized, but they are on Canvas, so look to see when stuff is due. Uh, contact me if there's going to be an issue about getting something in on time. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I am not here, I, let me rephrase that. I don't have any like scheduled times I'm going to be here next week. That being said, I'm probably going to be here a fair amount of time. So contact me if you need to see me about anything to discuss anything or if you have questions about stuff. And uh, we'll arrange a time that, that I'll be here for you to do that. So just because I'm not scheduling any time doesn't mean I'm, I'm not going to be here. It's just that I won't necessarily be here during normal class time or, no, or normal office hours or whatever. But if you contact me, I'm sure we can find a time um, when, when we could meet. Um, I think that's all of the main things. We don't have a final exam in this class. Um, the project is your final exam, if you want to count it that way. Um, do you have any questions now about anything I've gone over over the past, past few classes um, or something that maybe you're, you're stuck on in your project or uh, your assignment? Yes? I want to show a PDF document in my project. You want to show a PDF document? So sort of like have a, have a drop down of like certain documents that you can choose. Right. And you click on it and then in a window or panel, it shows a PDF version of that document. So I have the PDF saved. Yes. Um, and I'm assuming it's going to be something sort of like an image, but I don't think well, the ESP, I don't think the framework actually thinks of the well, well that, that's PDF a, as an image. Yeah, that's a good question. What are the, you mentioned one of the things on it is a PDF. What are the other things? Or are they all PDFs? Yeah, they're all, they're all PDFs. Okay, they're all PDFs. that probably makes it easier. Okay, so let's do this then. Let's write the code to open a PDF, all right? And let's see what you need to do. So I'm going to download the pizza example because it's all about pizza in this class. And the menu part then would be, uh, the, the drop down part would be then, well, we can talk about that. We actually can make a drop down. Let me find some PDFs. Tell you what, I will do the open a PDF part. You can try to work through the drop down menu connection. Oh, absolutely. Because I, I think I think if you not open up a PDF, then the drop down menu um, is. I would um, say my drop the drop down menu is fine. Right, and right, right. It's just, it's just actually being able to view or see. Right. PDF. <laughs> Let's look for a sample PDF. Let's look for. A pizza menu PDF. View our menu. All right. The Fox Pizza Den. Family tradition. All right, let's save this. So I'll save that as menu.pdf. All right. So let's do all our 
uh, extracting. And I'm going to put the PDF in. I could put it in its own folder, but I assume that part we can get. I'm just going to put it in the application folder. No, I'm not. I'm going to put this one in there. All right. So, uh, what am I doing? Let's open up Visual Studio and bring this guy in. Yeah, I probably could have just said the answer, you know. I, there's no reason for me to go through all these steps, but I could have just said the answer. But, hey, I made it this far, so let's go ahead and finish it up. In a nutshell, and who knows, maybe I'm wrong. In a nutshell, you simply make a link to it. Or, yeah, let's make a link to it. A H ref equals menu dot PDF click for menu. All right. So let's run this. menu, and there you go. You're the PDF. <laughs> wow. We can make it more hard. So, so, just, so, just, turn it, so just turn it into a uh, hyperlink. Yeah, a hyperlink. Um, th the web server and the browser like know what to do with certain file types, in a nutshell. All right, so they know right. what to do with PDFs. I hate Okay. Like oh, right, right, right. And I'm like, there's no way it's, it's got to be. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, um, how do I want to say? Um, sometimes, sometimes people have very specific things, like, I don't like the fact that that opens up in a browser window. I want it to open up on a panel within my page. You know, sometimes they have very specific needs, and, and that might be part of the reason why you get some of these obscure answers. Um, if you wanted to open it up in a new window, you just say target equals blank. Now, I normally don't like to do that. Um, I normally don't like when browsers force open a new window. That's, that's like them uh, imposing the way they feel that you should do it on you, right? You should have the choice as a user to open it up in a, in a new window or an old window. But this is one case where it might be justifiable because you might want to keep the website open and have the PDF available to uh, browse. So if we were to do that, then that opens it up in a new window. And you still have your site open and you have the PDF open. Um, if you want to make it more complicated, we could put a button maybe. Put a button on the page. I said we could put a button on the page. There we go. Bless <coughs> you. Welcome. And we could put in here response, redirect.
I'm not sure how you get this to open in a different window or if you can. But this should do the trick as well. By the way, what's the what's the text on this button? Should I see that on any of your projects? No. Okay. A little bit of me dies every time I grade a project and I see the button with the text of button on it. I have an excuse. One of the, my main excuses is I'm not grading my own work, right? So I would take points off even myself for having the button left to be buttoned, but I unfortunately am not grading myself. But I am grading your assignments. So spend a little bit of time to, to, to make it look like a real application and have a behavior of it. And if we do that, boom, opens up there. All right. Excellent. Other questions? Yes? How would you make something open in a new tab rather than a new window? Um, that's what I did with the link example by saying target equals underscore new. Or, I'm sorry, underscore blank. Not underscore new. It's showing a new tab, yeah. I didn't realize that it was. Yeah, it, yeah, it was a new tab. Yeah, not a new window. I'm actually not sure. With tab browsers, I'm not sure how you would get it to open up actually in a brand new window. I don't think you can do that. Uh, back in the old days when it was like single, when there were like, you know, if anyone in here even remembers browsers before they had tabs, the underscore blank opened it up in a brand new window. But now that, that means a new tab. And again, that, I mean, it's a great philosophical argument whether that's a good idea or not, right? Because um, people like me would say that uh, that can be confusing to people, all right? Um, and a real sophisticated user is going to know that if I control click on it, I can choose to open it up in a new tab if I want to. Whereas if you have it open up in a new tab, there's no way to get it to open up in the same tab. All right, other questions? All right, we're going to talk about Ajax. What is Ajax? And there are two acceptable answers to this question. Let's see if you can come up with one of them. What is Ajax? Go ahead. Repeat that, please. Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Uh, what does that mean in practice? What does... How would I tell the difference between an Ajax page and a regular page? The other acceptable answer for what Ajax is, and this was probably going to show my age, but Ajax is stronger than dirt. Okay, because there was an old TV commercial with Ajax stronger than dirt. Okay, I see I'm the only one. In fact, it, okay, good. In fact, if you listen to one of the door songs, the one with all the horns, I think it's called Touch Me. At the very end, they go, da, 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 da. And you, if you listen very closely, you can hear the voice go, stronger than dirt, because that's how it was in the commercial. Yes, it's the end of the semester, and I've lost a, a good part of my mind, so we're just kind of rambling today. All right. Asynchronous JavaScript and, and XML. And we can, we'll break that down and show exactly where it comes into play. But can anyone think of, well, let's look at a classic example of Ajax. And we'll talk about what's different between this and other pages. And then we'll like look at it on a more technical level. First, we'll just observe. So if I go to Google... I have a page. I start typing in something. I type an I. What do I get in there? I get a little window that has 10 choices. I type in IT. I get a little window that also has 10 choices. The most common search terms that start with an IT. ITA, 
most common ITA things. And I can continue and then I can pick one. All right? That's example of Ajax. What is Ajax about that page? All right? What is Ajax about this page is look. This is what a page looks like when it reloads. Even on a fast internet connection, notice how we see the page flicker a little bit. All right? I mean, we're, we're running, at least today, uh, our internet's going pretty fast. So when we get a new page from the server, it redraws the entire page. So you see a little flicker. Again, even on the fastest connections, you see a little flicker, especially like with images and, and things that really take a while to download. But notice here, we're not going to see this guy flicker. We're not going to see this graphic flicker. As I type the stuff in, it shifted a little bit, but it didn't flicker. As I type stuff in, that stays constant. All right? That means that it's not reloading the entire page. And that's the key aspect of Ajax. <coughs> With Ajax pages, we can refresh a portion of the page from the server without reloading the entire page. <coughs> now, you might ask, how do I know that that is coming from the server? For example, is this Ajax? Go to ESPN. Let's look at their menus. Is this Ajax? Page isn't flickering. I would say this probably is an Ajax. Could be. But this most certainly is Ajax. Why do I come to that conclusion? Why do I say that this is Ajax and this is not Ajax? Or let me rephrase the question. How do I know that the web server is involved here, but the web server is not involved when I do the mouse over? Those options don't change, all right? That's, that's definitely a big part of it. What is happening here is I put my mouse over this. I'm simply, there's JavaScript that simply changes the CSS for this page. So it makes, a, it makes if I put my mouse over NFL, it makes the NFL menu visible. In other words, that menu was downloaded the, in, as soon as I loaded the page. So when I load the ESPN page, I get everything, including those menus. So everything gets delivered to the page. Not just the stuff you see, but stuff that you don't see. Oh. And as I mouse over the different things, JavaScript on the browser side is simply saying, well, show this, hide that. Show this, hide that. So the server doesn't really need to get involved in it. Simply showing and hiding things is something that's really, really, really straightforward. It's the kind of thing that JavaScript can do easily. It's the kind of thing that JavaScript can do that doesn't require the server. And remember, if it doesn't require the server, we're better off not engaging the server, right? Because the user gets a quicker answer, all right? If the code is running on their browser, it doesn't have to travel through the Internet, all right? And the server isn't burdened by these little small little tiny requests. So this I would say is running exclusively client-side JavaScript and that's not Ajax. What is different here though? What is different with Google? What is clearly being used to come up with the list of the 10 most popular things? Okay, it's taking every character uh, that you type in and it's searching somewhere. Where is it searching? Again, I don't work for Google, so I can't give you a detailed answer, but I can probably guess what one of the components is using to do a search. Searching a database. Searching a database, right? And that 
by necessity, as you said, runs on the server. Clients don't connect to databases, all right? It would be impractical to do so. It would not be a good idea because of security concerns to do so. It's just, it just is a no-go from the start. So client-side code, code within the browser, JavaScript does not connect to any kind of server's database. The server, though, connects to the server's database. So due to the fact that this appears and, you know, unlike ESPN, we couldn't possibly have downloaded, when we downloaded the page, every combination of letters I could possibly type in, right? That would be ridiculous, all right? That would be, that would be on, on the infinite uh, side of things or close to it, all right? How many combinations of four letters there are? That would be, what, 26 to the fourth power, which, you know, is a big number, all right? Um, so we couldn't possibly be, we couldn't possibly have downloaded all the possibilities and let the browser show and hide the right possibility. That just plain doesn't make sense. So obviously, we're dynamically retrieving those, that stuff from the server, and we're updating a section of the page. So as I type a character in, or get rid of a character, a request goes to the server for certain database items. It comes back to the client, and the client refreshes the page. And that is what AJAX is. All right? So let's look at this maybe on a more, a less descriptive, a more, more technical level. All right? What does AJAX represent? We have a student define that. AJAX stands for asynchronous. JavaScript and XML. All right. Let's look at these words one at a time. Asynchronous. What does asynchronous mean? What's the opposite of asynchronous? Synchronous. synchronous. I'll give you an example of two kinds of conversations you can have. Tell me which one is synchronous and which one's asynchronous. I could be speaking to a person on the phone right now and asking them, asking them a question, and they give me the answer, and then I ask my next question, they give me the answer, and so on. That's conversation one. Conversation two is I call and I leave a voicemail for someone because they're away from their desk. All right? Ten minutes later, they pick up their voicemail, they call me back, and leave a response. 20 minutes later, I pick up my voicemail, hear their answer, ask them question two, and we continue, continue playing voicemail tags for the next three hours uh, at 10, 20 minute intervals. Which one of those conversations is synchronous and which one of them is asynchronous? First one's synchronous. First one's synchronous. Synchronized swimming, all right? Does anyone watch that in the Olympics? Does anyone have a TV? Synchronized diving. Okay, synchronized, thank you. Synchronized diving. What does synchronized mean? We're going to synchronize our watches because we're about to rob a bank. All right? That's just a joke for any law enforcement officers watching this. All right? What does it mean to synchronize our watches? Get them going at the same time so they match up. So with synchronized communications, people are doing it at the same time. So synchronized is at the same time. Synchronous or synchronized means is Latin for at the same time, all right? Um, asynchronous, put the A in front of something, that means not. So asynchronous means not at the same time, you know? Um, if, you, if you say someone's political, that means that they are interested in politics. If you say they're apolitical, that means that they're not interested in politics, all right? So asynchronous means not at the same time. So the voicemail conversation, the two people engaging in the conversation don't need to be there at the same time. A message can be sent and a response can be sent. So thinking in terms of web servers, 
a request can be made and the response comes back. All right? But it doesn't come back necessarily immediately. It comes back when the server's ready to do that. Because the server could be doing all kinds of stuff. Now again, when we're talking about web servers and computers, hopefully we're not talking about 10 minute intervals, right? We're talking about fractions of seconds. Because it would be a shame to type in a letter and have to wait 10 minutes for Google to respond, right? That wouldn't be very workable. But yet, there is a little bit of a delay, all right? before we get our response back. That's what makes it asynchronous. So the browser essentially makes a request to the server, then waits for the answer. All right? And hopefully it doesn't wait too long. Even a second would probably be a long wait, right? But it, it waits for an answer. Depending on the internet connection speed and uh, the burden on the server and all sorts of things, it might take a little or more time. The server then responds back to the client, but it doesn't respond back with an entire web page. All right? It re responds back with a piece of data. All right? A piece of data. In our case, for example, with Google, the one that we looked at, it responds to a piece of data that corresponds to a list of the 10 most popular search terms that begin with whatever we typed in. All right? It's not a whole page. It's just a list of data. So there's no formatting. There's no HTML or CSS or anything like that. It just responds back with the raw data. Now, here is where, here is where Ajax is slightly not named correctly. Because in many cases, the data is going to come back in an XML format. But it doesn't have to. But if we had like asynchronous JavaScript and sometimes use XML, but sometimes do something else, that would be too long of a thing to abbreviate, right? So they just shorten it to Ajax. But in your head, remember that sometimes XML, sometimes another format. But the key thing, it's not sending back an entire web page. All right? Because if it did send back an entire web page, then Ajax really wouldn't be of any sort of importance. All right? <coughs> Old school web pages, traditional web pages, HTTP requests, um, all, all mean the same thing. And they worked where the client makes a request to the server and gets back a whole page. So all of the pages that we've been talking about so far in this class fit this model. We have a client. And again, it, it, sometimes it's confusing because when you're working in development mode, your client and the server are the same machine. It's your machine. But again, when, when the application gets deployed, to an actual web server, the client makes a request. It goes through the internet to the web server. Static pages, we know what happens. The server finds them and delivers the HTML. We're not going to talk about those, right? We're going to talk about the kinds of ASP.NET pages we have had. The server's going to run ASP.NET, which means grabs the ASPX file, grabs the .cs file, interacts with the database. It does whatever it has to do to process that request. Remember, this request has a bunch of factors in it. It has any data that we've entered into a form. It has our IP address, which can translate to an approximate location. It has a platform that we're on. Are we on a Mac, a PC, a mobile device, whatever. And some other information as well. 
The web server takes that and runs our ASP.NET pages, right? It does everything that we've done this whole class. It might do a database query. It might um, randomly generate numbers and play rock, paper, and scissors, whatever. The bottom line is, is it comes up with a response that goes to the client, and that response is an HTML document which again is going to contain HTML, CSS, JavaScript, any images, etc. that it needs. So remember, what gets delivered back to the client is just plain old HTML. And it went through this process and it, it's dynamic because there's no pre-written HTML on the server side, but that HTML is formed by running the server side scripts that we have written there and we produce HTML. So because of this, we can come up with, when you log on to Canvas, you get a different page than me. All right? Same server-side script runs, but guess what? You gave different information in the form. You gave your user ID and password. So when it does a database query, it gets different information than when I log on. All right? I search for Italian restaurants here. My brother searches for them in Brooklyn. We get a different list of results. Right? Why? Because he has a different IP address than me. His says that he's in Brooklyn. Mine says I'm in Elyria. So my results in this process are customized to pull up stuff that is closer to me. The thing is, is this is known as an HTTP request. And it produces a complete web page. One of the things that gets delivered is JavaScript. All right? So if we think through ESPN's page, when you go to their home page, you get back from their server an HTML document, and it has all of the HTML that you see and some HTML that you don't see. That is the submenus. You don't see those initially. But it contains a JavaScript so that when you put your mouse over that, it can dynamically change the CSS to show and hide different menus. Now, how is an AJAX request different than this? First of all, when we initially request the page, it's going to be this kind of request, even with Google, right? If I go to Google, I have to start out with a web page. So Google's going to do its thing and it's going to deliver me its search page. When I start typing in, though, I create a different kind of request. All right. An AJAX request or XML HTTP. Again, when we're talking about AJAX, when you see XML, remember, like, sometimes XML. All right, sometimes something else. So, we make a XML HTTP request, which includes you. the URL that we want to request to. I guess that's part of this request, too. And the form data. So, we can put it on stuff on the query stream. All right? Just like... Just like... Uh, you know, just like we would in, in a regular uh, HTTP request. And some other stuff. These are the things that we're most interested in. That request goes to the internet, hits the web server, and a response is sent to the client. Now again, this is an asynchronous response. So it's going to happen when it happens. It's not going to happen necessarily synchronized. This response is going to come, but it's not going to be a complete web page. It's going to 
going to be maybe data in XML format. Maybe data in delimited format. I'm sure many of you have probably heard like of a tab delimited file or a comma delimited file. All right. Maybe a fixed length record. A fixed length record is where, like, let's say you're doing a search for the courses at LC, an AJAX search. The first four characters are like the department, so CISS. -S. It's always four characters, right? Accounting is, what, ACTG, something like that, and so on. So with fixed length, the data is always a certain length, all right? And then the course code is then three digits. So CISS 216, CISS 243. So that's another option. JSON data is another option. The only reason I list these is it's not just XML, despite the name AJAX. So what does a client do with that data? Well, the client gets notified that the server is done with their request. That would be like when you get a voicemail, like you get a little indicator on your phone, right? Like in the phone of my office, there's a light on that says I have a voicemail. Or like my, my mobile phone, there's, I don't know, something beeps and there's a little icon or something that indicates I had a voicemail. So, same thing here. When the, the server responds to the client, the client gets notified that hey, your request is done. And then there will be defined a JavaScript function that takes the data, formats it, and adds it to the page. So it doesn't refresh the whole page, it just updates an area on the page. All right? So, let's follow this whole thing. I go to Google. Initially, my first request is going to be a regular HTTP request. All right? Google responds with their home page. I type a character in. Every time I type a character, I format an AJAX request to a URL on Google that includes the letters that I've typed in. All right, that goes to the web server. The server responds with data in some format, maybe XML, maybe something else, that contains a list of the 10 most common search terms. That comes back to the client. I have this chunk of data. The client gets notified, hey, guess what? Your request has been finished. There's a JavaScript function that will take those 10 terms and update the web page. That is, it will show them in that little box. And that happens every time you press a key. All right? Which really is amazing. All right? That, in a nutshell, is AJAX. All right? We can think of other examples of AJAX. All right? Google Documents uses AJAX. How do I know that? Because you don't have to click a button to save Google Documents. It automatically saves it periodically, right? Which means that I know it's not saving it on the client. It must be telling the server periodically to save it. So in that case, periodically there's going to be a request to the server, and it's not going to be based on a keystroke or something. It's going to be based on time to, hey, go and save this document, and it'll go and do it. In that case, the notification probably isn't anything special, all right, because it's just going and saving it and might return some kind of code saying if it wasn't able to save it. Um, Facebook. If you're logged into Facebook, right, and you just posted um, a hilarious meme, right, and you, you're sitting there and you, you have your Facebook page up. As people are commenting on your latest post, you will see that number of how many responses you have increment. All right? You don't have to manually go and refresh the page. It will show you, boom, you got one response. Boom, you got two responses. Three, 
You got three reactions. If someone sends you a, a private message, boom, that pops up on your screen. All those things happen without you doing anything. And all those things, by necessity, are coming from the server. All right? So therefore, periodically, the browser is going out and making an AJAX request asking, has anything new happened? All right? And if anything is new that has happened, it will refresh you. So in the case, one of the things that we, we would come back would be the number of, uh, of, of uh, comments that you have. So if there's been three comments that you haven't reviewed, boom, you probably get three back from the server. You know, maybe that's all it sends back is the number of comments and that it updates you. All right. This sounds intimidating, right? This on a nuts and bolts level, um, it's not hard to do, but it can be a little confusing. Because you have to write JavaScript to make that request, all right? It's, you're not just clicking a link anymore. You know, that's how you make a, a request, in a regular HTTP request, is you click a link. You have to actually write JavaScript to format the request and send it to the server. You have to write the server-side code to take that request and respond to it. And then you have to write the JavaScript code to refresh the page. Well... Remember, Microsoft loves you. Microsoft doesn't want you overworking. So Microsoft built a lot of these things in the framework. Yet I think it's really important that you understand how this works, so that you understand like when to use it. I could have gone in today and probably in 10 minutes shown you how to create a ASP.NET AJAX page. And I know what many of you are thinking. Why didn't you just do that then? Why have you wasted our time for an hour talking about these other things, all right? However, if you know how to do it and you don't understand the intent behind it and when to use it, then you're not going to be able to use the tool effectively, all right? In the 232 class, which some of you uh, are taking or have taken or will take, um, we actually write our own AJAX stuff, all right? And again, it's a little tricky to, to do that, uh, but it's important, again, to understand it on a nuts and bolts level. So let's make an AJAX request on our pizza example. All right? Yes. So I'm going to go and create a new page. So I'm going to create a new file, and new web form, and I will call it Ajax. Now, I'm going to put a bunch of stuff on this page, a not a bunch of stuff, but um, some stuff. So I'm going to put an image on this page. I'm just going to put a, a bunch of stuff just so I can see that there's other stuff on the page other than, than this. So I can put this image on the page and So all the stuff that you see here now is going to be what you're going to get when you load the page initially. All right? This is a part that when we do this, we should notice that it doesn't flicker at all. 
Because if it flickers, it means we're not really Ajaxing. All right? Because we're going to write a little, little panel uh, on this page that is going to get updated on the client. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's going to get updated by making an Ajax request to the server. Okay. To do Ajax, you need a couple of things. The first thing that you need is you need a script manager. You don't really have to do anything. <coughs> Just drag it on your page, a script manager. Um, what this is used for is remember that Ajax is simply a more nuanced way of the client talking to the server and the server responding to the client. So someone has to be the boss of that. Someone has to, to manage those requests, make sure that they happen in the correct way. And that's the Ajax script manager. The other thing I'm going to have is I'm going to have an update panel. This is the part that gets updated by the, 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 the Ajax request. So anything inside an update panel will get updated by the Ajax request. Anything outside of it um, doesn't get updated. It only gets displayed when the page is uh, initially displayed. So I'm going to put in here just a couple of things. I'm going to put in here a text box, a button, a grid view, and a SQL data source. Now again, this appears inside my update panel, which means that this is the section of code, will be the section of code that gets updated through the Ajax request. All right? It's going to happen that way because I put a script manager and I put an update panel. The rest of the page is going to be just a plain HTML page that does not get updated through the Ajax request. It gets initially loaded and it will stay there until I refresh and re get, uh, make a, another HTTP request to get a brand new page back from the server. All right, let's go and configure those things. I'm going to go and say my data source. I'll configure it. Pick my connection. What I call my connection? Pizza connection string. Never a good sign. Here's the good news. If you didn't catch what I did the first time, I get to show it to you again. All right, here's my Ajax page. on here.
we'll set the image URL to images slash Hawaiian pizza one dot JPEG. All right. Put my H1 on here again. I will go and I will create my put my script manager on the page. Put my update panel on the page. Inside my update panel, put a text box, a button. Notice this is the part of the page that I want to be Ajaxed. All right, this is the part that is going to get data from the server and will refresh without refreshing the whole page. So I put my text box and button in. I put the data source and the grid view. I configure the data source. Pizza connection string. I'm going to Select star from from specialty pizza where pizza name like percent plus question mark plus percent. What's that going to do? What's the like percent question mark percent do? Looks for strings that have that whatever you typed in. Right. In other words, it doesn't have to be an exact match. If I typed in H A W it would match Hawaiian pizza. Um, so if I just if I type A in it will give me everything that has an A in it. All right. I then have to say where that parameter comes from, of course. It's going to come from a control. Specifically, it's going to come from that text box. I could test the query, make sure I'm right. H, error. And my guess is it's specialty pizzas, not specialty pizza. Or not. Let's go. Look at this table. Especially pizza. Especially pizza name. Where did they move the percent key to? There we go. Where's that going to come from? It's going to come from not the query string, from a form. And the form field is going to be text box one. All 
All right, there we go. Okay. There's the text box one. Good. And then I have to go and combine this with the data source. All right, I'm going to set this to my start page. And when I run it, Notice that, and again, it's real hard to tell, but notice that we don't have any flicker on that. So I type in H. All right. It's refreshing that without reloading the whole page. Because even on this situation, when we reload the whole page, you can see just a very quick flicker. So it's not reloading the page. It's simply updating that. Why is it updating that? Because, number one, I put the script manager in there. The script manager has the brains to make this work. All right, to handle all the Ajaxy things. Um, secondly, I put the stuff that I wanted to be updated via the Ajax request. So the portion of the page that, that I want updated with stuff from the server, I put within an update panel. That tells the script manager that this is an Ajax request. All right, and therefore I should not, when I click submit, I should not resubmit and refresh the entire page via an HTTP request, but I'm making an XML HTTP request because the button's inside there. It's smart enough to know that the button is inside there. Just for laughs, I'm going to put another button outside of here. Fortunately, I can just copy the button code. I'm going to put a button outside of here. I submit via this button. Hmm. Let's look for a little subtler sign. We see that thing spin, which means it's refreshing the page. I submit via that, and it's not spinning up here. So it's not going back to the server. All right. That's Ajax in a nutshell. Um, when is it effective? It's effective if you had a page um, that probably took a long time to load, all right, that has a lot of stuff on it, where you want to load just or reload just a section of the page. All right? So, um, experiment on your project. If there's something that seems to fit this bill, you know, try to do an Ajax request. All right? That, that would make me happy unlike having a button named button. All right? Are there any questions about this or anything else? All right, remember Wednesday is, uh, Wednesday is tomorrow. Thursday is a work day. So, you know, you'll have an opportunity to work on your project and to show off your project to other people in the class, get some final questions answered from me, um, share your work, uh, maybe inspire someone else to do something differently, and so on. All right. We'll see you in lab. Um, yes? On Thursday, when will the lab be open? It's just a work day. Um, probably you know, 10 15, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I mean, maybe earlier, but, but definitely by 10, 15.